Hello, people! Welcome to another edition of Dose of Drew, and this is Friday Night Knives. And tonight we are looking at the Spider Co. Shaman. This is the big brown bear special heat treatment on the CPM15V. This is some serious stuff. Um, this is a special edition. If anyone doesn't know about it, you're probably not going to find these. This is an incredibly uh, rare sprint run. I wish they would do it more of these instead of a sprint run. But you can always find Big Brown Bear out on his stuff. Uh, what's up, Sean? Anyway, so very, very cool, number one. Couple of things that are different real quick. Normally, the Shaman is a full flat grind. This is a saber grind. I'm sure it has to do with how they grind it and warping and all that sort of stuff. But let's get to the first things first part where we do overall measurements. So we go from tip to tail. We are just over inches, about eight and a quarter. From tip to scale, we are about three and three quarters. And on cutting edge, as not as the crow flies, but along the edge itself, we are at about three and one quarter, just slightly over. It's actually about three and five sixteenths or so. For those of you who don't know what a sixteenth looks like on a tape measure, those are the little marks. <laughs> All right, now here's something else to go with because this is a beefy boy right here. Over five ounces, 5.18 in this particular case. It is a compression lock. That is a serious piece of metal and G10 going on right there. There is some, even some weight reduction, titanium backspacer. There's even some, a, a bit of milling in there to help reduce the weight in the handle, which gives it a fairly decent balance point. Let's see if I can get that right behind the pivot. Not too bad. It's right in front of your finger and saber grip, right behind it there. As we're I'm getting into some of the design parts of this before we get too far, but before we do any more, let us do the Spider Co. sandwich. And the shaman is going to be hanging out. It's like a like a burger patty. That's just a little too much. It's just a, quite a bit bigger than that uh, pair. Not quite. It's quite a bit bigger than the P, uh, pair of three, but it is just a little bit bigger than the paramilitary two, which is not a tiny knife in its own right in fact just a quick little bit probably the one i have that might be and it may not even be it's about the same size as the rat one another big knife i'm going to kind of hit some of these because this is a large size and there is the cgrb large feldspar it is a big one this one's got some meat to it which is a good thing in many many ways all right, and one more here. It's just a blur, significantly larger, not just any leak, but a random leak. What can I say? This thing's big. All right, big brown bear makes big brown knife. And significantly larger than the bug out. And of course the element in this thing just overshadows them massively. It is a big knife. And, of course, whatever. <laughs> anyway, all right, back to the damn nice characteristics here. The design on it. This is a classic design. It's part of the Native series. For those who are Native Chief and all that sort of stuff, this is the Native 5, right, where you get this almost drop point modified Warncliffe. Uh, I like to think of it as a worn foot, you know, kind of like a worn shoe. You got that tip, but there's a little bit of upturn, but that's the only thing. This is one of the, outside of the Native Chief, this is one of the larger knives in the Native series. And it's a good one. In fact, one more big knife from Spider Coat to throw in here that would probably be the closest thing in my collection that I would say follows the same use case, and that's this, all right? The Stretch 2 in K390 with the straight... Thing. One of my favorite Spider Co. knives, K390, is an awesome steel like CPM 15B. It is not stainless. It does have a lot of carbides and everything like that, taking up a lot of the carbon. So, it, like D2, it has some stain resistance, but not a lot. A lot of that carbon's tied up in carbide, so it doesn't decouple from the iron. All right. 
So first things first, saber grip. This is a big knife. And Spider Co. rarely has bad ergonomics. This thing's great. Pinch grip, overhand. Scoring, right? Got, uh, scoring stuff. Very, very good in that bit. Reverse grip. Of course, you can get in. Pick a sliver, get up close. Yeah, it's really, it. my hands, this is a little bit big for it. And of course, look, this is factory. This is factory edge, and I have used this a lot. You got 15V. It just doesn't lose its edge. Like, it seems like it just doesn't. It, I'm peeling hair off without even causing a stutter with that thing. And I've cut, Lord knows, <laughs> right? How much this, I mean, it's... It's just ridiculous, right? Like shaving the... Let's see if I can do it. It's got a fairly, fairly... There we go. Got to tip it just right to get that. In. It's got a fairly, uh, I want to say obtuse, but they're all acute. It's less than 90, but it has a, a, a less steep secondary bevel than most. It seems to be right around the 20 degree, but with this much steel, it's, it's, it's for strength behind the edge, not so much anything else. In fact, let's grab a couple of those. Zero. All right. 143 thousandths on the uh, behind the edge. One thing you love about spider coats is they leave that part right there at the base. Believe it or not, that's approximately behind the edge. 21 thousandths behind the edge. Yeah. It's a thick boy, but it's also really strong. <laughs> really strong. I don't, if you, if you get a chance, Go over to Brown Bear, Big Brown Bear's channel. Um, he's even got some videos where he's chopping a two by four with with this sort of thing. It's ridiculous, and you can shave afterwards. This stuff is, the steel is incredible. But I'm jumping ahead because um, the design itself is really ergonomic, and so many spider coats. Oh my God, so many spider coats are square with barely a chamfer around the edge just to keep it from, you know, just barely rounded and smooth around the edges. Not the Shaman. Shaman has su has such a long bevel, it is almost contoured. It's flat after after that rounding, but it, man, it makes it one of the more comfortable spider coats. It's up there with their, uh, in fact, I'll bring the stretch two back out because even their injection molded, very, except for on some of these bottom parts where your fingers roll over, don't have that much beveling. It's it's really, really nice and extremely comfortable and makes it seem like one of the few spider Spydercos that's contoured. The only other one I know of, and I am not a spider co expert, is the actual Native 5 with this contoured uh, carbon fiber in the sunburst. This is it's one of the reasons I got it besides the S90V. Uh, it's really, really comfortable in the hand. Extraordinarily good. Single biggest complaint. One, there's no complaint about the compression lock. It's one of the strongest locks out there. No matter what anyone wants to say about back locks and all that stuff. Um, that's essentially an I-beam, right? And you're compressing it along its strength axis. So you essentially have a piece of steel that's that thick. That's strong. It, it just... You can, you can talk all you want to about back locks. The sheer strength of those pins and that much thing is still pretty strong. It's at least as strong as the liners. Anything you got this, you're putting 500 pounds. I've seen so many of those. It cracks me up. You want to impress me? Drop it from six inches on that thing. Instead of a static weight, make it dynamic. Because static weight doesn't impress me. You want to you want to impress me? Drop it from differing heights. Go from six inches, twelve inches, eighteen inches until that thing breaks. Because I'm gonna bet once you start squaring that velocity, the back locks are gonna fail. Especially that G10 part where it's just sitting there and it needs to pop out. I'd be interested to see how that works. Um, so yeah, there's that. G10 is probably the weakest link in some of those back locks. And this has a lot of the stuff too. If if you're trying to go the opposite way. 
you, you, you got a big piece of steel in your way and it's, it's fairly well established. So compression locks great, but this one hits your thing, hits your finger. But if you go up front and you learn to take your finger out, like you can get used to it and it closes in one bit. The action is fantastic. It's on bearings. I'm pretty sure. Oh no. Suckers on washers. Has not has not come apart yet. I'm pretty sure that's on washers. Hold on. Take it back. Bearings. Had to get it in the light. Anyway, it tells you I need to take this apart and clean it. I've used it so much, it's about time to clean it. Put some some stuff on it to help with the uh, corrosion resistance. Hashtag not a commercial, just stuff I actually use. Um, so yeah, there's that. For anyone else who's wondering, you can do the same thing with blue cleaner. It, it protects as well. Have a couple of those. Still use that too. Anyway, I digress. The aesthetics of it, really cool. Like, at this point in time, it's a known aesthetic. Like, this is not a new knife. This is just a new version. It is my first Shaman. I do not have a Manix 2 or anything like that. It is my first Shaman. And, uh, yeah, the aesthetics on this are great. The design is fantastic. The saber grind is nice. The adjustments for the 15V in the sprint run don't bother me in the slightest. Um, this thing still just destroys. The edge is ridiculous. Spyderco has some incredible edges, especially on their sprint runs. The only other knife I have out the gate or, or out of the box that was as well apexed as this one is my S90V paramilitary too. Let me make sure I got that here. This one, which has previously been a uh, thing. This was, this is well apexed out of the box. So a lot of the dealer specials and stuff, I know there's, there's some conspiracy theories about how it does, but if they're able to put on the sprint runs, just put that little bit much more of attention to detail in there. Cause they know they're going to, you know, there's a little bit more retail price. There's some, there's some extra profit in there so they can spend some extra time on the edge. It's incredible. Fantastic. The design is great. Aesthetics are great, right? It's the saber grind kind of gives, gives you a little bit that, that drop edge and the curve keeps your fingers out. It's really hard not to say this is incredible. And the mechanics, probably the worst thing is that tab right there that pops up into the, uh, pops right up into the compression lock bit. Does make it a little bit harder to flip out, right? Especially if you're on camera. But spider, spidey flip or free wave flick, as well as slow rolling with your thumb, all that stuff. Very, 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 very easy to do, right? Super great, because fidgety is all get out. And, oh man, when I just went, oh man. Yep, slow roll it. Not gonna do it on camera, that angle sucks. <laughs> all right, so yeah, mechanics, pretty much flawless. This Again, this has not been cleaned on the inside. I haven't done any maintenance on it. This has been pulled out of the box and used as much as I can do it outside of other testing, and it is fantastic. It, in fact, it, is so nice i have to not use it and remind myself to use my other testing knives because this is just it doesn't it doesn't lose its edge it doesn't even get slightly dull i can go use some other knives um even some s35 vn or d2 cut a few boxes up if i happen to have a lot or have a you know a couple of large ones and i need to get them into smaller pieces and of course any excuse to use the knife more than necessary is there so the pieces are like you know one inch strips trying to get as much use out of it and see, you know, as I can for testing purposes. It's it's overkill on box cutting, but great for testing. This thing just doesn't lose its edge. This thing still, still peels hair off. I can treetop with this thing. And I have, I have destroyed boxes with it. I have dug it into there, the tip, no, no problem. The strength on this steel is fantastic. The mechanics are great. And honestly, that's the noteworthy points on this. Like when you go into the nice part, the noteworthy points, 15V with a custom style heat treatment from Big Brown Bear, who is a student of steel. Fear no steel indeed. 
Um, and he is a student of both heat treatment and steel. Very, very, he's a custom maker. Everything I have seen, he uh, whether he's doing stuff with uh, Dr. Laren Thomas from Nice Steel Nerds or Spider Co. or out on the stuff, he is a student of the steel, willing to learn, loves the science, loves the stuff behind it, is definitely passionate about knives, and it shows in this production version. I can only imagine how amazing his customs are. And the intended purpose is to be the one knife you need. This thing's, as long as you don't need corrosion resistance, let me put that in there. As long as you don't need significant corrosion resistance, this is a steel for you. It, it just doesn't lose, like you can chop wood with it. You can, he, he does it on his, I'm not kidding, on his YouTube, go look at it. He hacks through a freaking two by four with this thing and then shape. I, I mean, there's cuts. I don't doubt his integrity. So I believe he's just shortening the video and not making cuts, you know, of stuff before. Like, honestly, like, that's uh, so why I, part of the reason, besides the fact that I'm just too busy with a full-time job to learn video editing, I don't edit or script my videos. This is just straight how it goes. So, yeah, I, I definitely believe that, that that's what he does and this what it is. I haven't done it yet because, well, I like this thing and I want to keep it, you know, super, super awesome. But... Just in case I ever end up giving this one away because I, I don't carry this. It's too big and heavy. I rarely wear jeans or anything that can that can take a five ounce knife. But with a thinner blade stock and the beauty of a fixed blade, I was fortunate enough to get a 15V mule when they came out. So I do still have 15V if I do end up doing a giveaway or selling the 15V. I know a lot of people want it. <laughs> these go for ridiculous prices on things like NAF sale. Or I might hold on to it for the thousand sub for a thousand subscriber giveaway. That's a whole nother thing. I'm trying to figure out how to do giveaways on this. I'm new to it all, so thank you for your patience for everyone who's waiting for that. Because there's going to be a bunch of knives coming soon as soon as I can start getting the sales and giveaways and stuff done. And, and uh, yeah, it'll be the subscribers and all that. Patreon, uh, buy me a coffee and this may be one of the knives that go, goes in there for the thousand subscriber because i really want to get to the thousand subscriber mark then we'll see what happens after that cost to value ratio this is a hard one to really really put in because it really is a subjective thing because here's the thing it's not cheap <laughs> nor is it inexpensive but it's also about the only way you're going to get some serious heat treat, some seriously well heat treated CPM 15V in your pocket. Uh, custom knives, if you go custom knives, it's two, three, four, ten times as much as, as this. Like custom knives with this kind of stuff. I don't know Big Brown Bear's prices. Please look at his website. But it is not as cheap as this. <laughs> and I wouldn't expect it to be. This is production value. So the the cost the cost is high, but the value is high. If this is if you get a 15V knife, and you don't have to worry about corrosion resistance, it, you may have to sharpen it once and once or twice in your lifetime. If you just have regular EDC use, and with the work with what I've seen Sean do, where he's chopping two by fours and cutting through stuff, like the edge retention is going to stick. So yeah, it, this is kind of the one knife for life sort of steel. And that gives it a value that's high. So it's not the best cost to value ratio out there, but it's not as bad as you might think with some other, other knives that cost in the 200 something dollar range and give you something like S35, right? You get S35VN or even S30VN or CPM20, uh, 20CV, M390, all that stuff. Some of the more common things, even MagnaCut, you're going to get at the same prices and not have the strength and edge retention of this. Toughness is a different thing, whereas as far as like plastic and elastic deformation, that's a different different story. Um, without getting into much in that, that's coming up on some of the other videos I'm working on that are more about knife knowledge as opposed to reviews. Again, too much into the channel. But that's that's really the cost of value. It's a high cost to value ratio. It's, it's not low just because it's expensive. It delivers a lot of value and uniqueness for the price without being super expensive. Uh, it, I mean, it is, what, what was it? Maybe about half price of something like a Chris Reeve Sabenza? 
Not that Chris Reeves aren't worth it, but if I could get two of these for one price of those, that's a significant difference. So yeah, it's, it's definitely up there for the quality, the craftsmanship, and the uniqueness of the steel. It's definitely a high value. And I expected, to, I knew what 15V could be, you know, what the idea of 15% vanadium <laughs> means with that high carbon, right? That's a lot of vanadium carbides, some of the hardest carbides out there. You're only looking at things like titanium carbides and W3C carbides, right? The tungsten, tungsten only carbides and all that sort of stuff. Those are some of the only things that are harder than the vanadium carbides. Not, and it's, you know, it's small degrees, not leaps and bounds. So I expected it to be, I did not expect it to be this incredibly strong, tough, and well-refined. Um, the edge is incredible. The secondary bevel, pretty much even on both sides. There's a little bit of wobble, but I think that is far less about the secondary bevel than it is just the tiniest little bit of, let's see if I can put this on here, tiniest little bit of wobble along the edge. And it's, right, the, the bevel magnifies it. So what's a quarter of a millimeter here is probably on the wave less than that, right? So it's, we're talking about things that are like a less than a hundredth of, the, of an inch or around there. Pretty, pretty, pretty small plus and minuses there. Pretty good tolerances on that. And I honestly don't have any requests. Like this is, it. well, I'll take that back. I'll come back to the request because it's not specifically to this knife because the handle's great. Like the Shaman is one of my favorite uh, spider coats out of the box as far as comfort. So not a lot of requests. You know, I could get another handle set for it. Like there's all sorts of other ones that might be slightly more contouring thing, but this is one of the most comfortable ha spider co handles out the box. So it's not, not as imperative unless you want color changes or anything like that for like mix and match or you're matching your outfits or whatnot you know matching your edcs and so on but if i had a request don't make it a sprint run make it a recurring make it a recurring thing make make recurring knives in 15v um i'm sure that it's you know sean's not going to be too upset about the the money that is but these things go like you're the only it's the every, everyone else has cpm you know or s90v right Maybe not 110V, but eh, S90V is close enough. You know, Magna Cut, there's a lot of other steels out there. And even though Spyderco is the super steel place to go for like, if you're a steel freak, um, this makes it, this is another unique one. Like you can find some with things like K390, right? That's a, that's another great one for Spyderco. K390 is ridiculously tough and high edge retention. That's about 9% vanadium like S90V. So yeah. Give us more of these knives that take advantage of this more, like the like the Shaman, the Paramilitary Two, the Manix Two. Like it's great that you have the big knives, but uh, yeah, give us give us more. That's that's really all I can say is give give us more. Give us something even maybe in a new design or a different design. Like the Para Three is one that I, that comes to mind because I like that knife, and I know that even if it comes in G10, I can pull one out and drop it into <laughs> drop it into the lightweight chassis, which is great. Yeah, give us more. That's my only request on this, because man, right? The design classic has been around for a while. Very well done. The ergonomics compression lock. This is just a ridiculously strong knife with tip to base. Just as long as the handle, you get a ton of blade for the size. You get the choke up with the little knob so that you don't run into, into the edge, which is fantastic. The hole is intersected, I guess, by the, by the grind. There's a flat spine to help increase toughness and give it something that's not going to try and warp. Uh, and it's fully lined with... I mean, this is about as close as I've ever seen a contoured scale from Spyderco out the box. Titanium backspacer on this. The S30V one, I'm sure is great. I, I just, I wanted CPM 15V. I am, a, I am 
uh, a subscriber to Knife Steel Nerds. I consider myself a Knife Steel Nerd. I, I love this thing. My only problem with it is I can't carry it. <laughs> it's too heavy. It's too big and too heavy. This thing can go in my pocket when I go down to the to do recycling or, or you know, I, I put it in my pocket. I actually don't wear it because it drags it down. I have to put it in a pocket that nothing else is in so that it doesn't weigh down one side of my shorts. Um, I live in the su Southwest US. It's warm here. I don't have to worry too much about moisture, humidity affecting the steel. The worst it is is going to give it a little patina, which is just fine. So I wear shorts and stuff a lot. This knife isn't very conducive to wearing with shorts. <laughs> so that's my biggest problem with it. And, and why as much as I love it, it might end up it might end up going in a giveaway. It's simply because I have this that I can get a sheath. I can I have other things that I can make handles out of. Right? Four by four. Um, or what is that? That's, I think that's four by four. Yeah, four by four weave with uh, aerospace level compression in there. Fantastic, right? I got I got stuff I can use, and if that one if that one isn't good enough for me, I got some marble. Right? There's I got stuff to make handle scales for this thing, and this is something I can take, put a patina on, or you know force patina it or something like that, and make it get that dark gray tool steel look like wrenches and stuff. And I'll have a fixed blade in 15V that I can take camping or anything like that with this small little knife. And this will be perfect for all sorts of stuff. For carving wood, this would be my day pack carry along with my Leatherman. I can do that. The Shaman is one that I like to have. It's one of those, this is almost like a safe queen. <laughs> I, except I use it, but I don't carry it. Like I, it's, it's the at-home use knife. Um, but it is fantastic. And so, quick recap. Design, classic. Very, very good. What can I say? Yeah, there's a few things knock, knocking off on it for that uh, little tab poking into there. Wouldn't mind a little bit different. I wouldn't mind a, a balance point right about the pivot, but that's a whole different story. Right, and it's not bad where it's at, and it when you put it in the choke up, it is right under your, right under your knuckle. So this grip right here, the pinch grip, is fantastic, and it's nimble. It moves right under your knuckle, so this knuckle is where that pivots right under it, and that's that's pretty good. Mechanics, other than that knob that pops in there, you get used to it. Flawless. Great action. Even after a lot of use and what's bound to be a little bit of grime and grit in there, still perfect. Noteworthy points. I think I've may have beat that horse enough, but uh, CPM 15V, like with the Big Brown Bear special heat treatment. Intended purpose. One knife to rule them all, right? Like, this is the one pocket knife to have. As long as you don't need corrosion resistance, bam. Um, cost to value ratio, high. It's not as high as some of the cheaper knives that deliver more value for a quarter of the money. But the uniqueness and other things that this knife brings does bring a lot of value. You may not value it, but it is a unique, unique steel in the knife market as far as most, as far as being able to get it. And it comes from Spyderco, Spyderco, which if they don't execute it well, it's noteworthy as opposed to the fact that almost every other Spyderco knife you get is going to be fantastic. So it's really more noteworthy if something's wrong with a Spyderco than not. And there's there's more, it's not the only company like that, but it's one that you can pretty much depend on. You can depend on Spyderco's integrity when it comes to making their knives and, and their quality control. So that's high on the cost of value. And expectations, it did it. Requests, more 15B. <laughs> so in the damn nicer, again, four and a half. I I would personally knock down on it because I wish it was I wish it was lighter. But for what it is, the heavy duty, big user knife that this is, that's exactly what it should have. It's hefty. It's a big boy with a thick piece of 15V. Full liners, a titanium backspacer, and some really solid brown G10 that's got ridiculous 
chamfering that gives you no hot spots, even with that clip. And that would be the first thing I would do. No, not scales or anything like that. Get a deep carry clip for the sucker. And I don't carry a lanyard, so who cares? Get me something that puts it to there so it would fit all the way in whatever pants and belt I need to hold this much weight up in my pants. That sounded wrong. Anyway, so yeah, four and a half stars on this. There's other ones that get it with the cost value ratio. It doesn't mean that this is lesser than those, just in the overall scoring system here this is about four and a half stars but that's only only because it is expensive it is i want it is only a sprint run right you can't just go out and buy these all the time these are hard to find and they get more and more expensive on the secondary market the longer they go without any more so that's that's really what brings it down is that it's just hard if this was a full production you can get 15 v all the time and they had this the cost was more subsidized with the larger volume. This would be fine. There's nothing wrong with this knife. There's a tab that pops up. Is that a big deal? Yeah, but you get used to it. And you can pinch ahead and it works fine. So as long as you're up in front of that tab, you're good. So it's, it's adjustable. It's not a deal breaker. Yeah, four and a half stars. Sham, I can see why so many people love this thing. I really can't because this is incredible as a knife. And the 15V just really puts the icing on the cake, if you will. Hard to complain, hard to sit here and say, wow, this sucks or anything like that because there's really nothing wrong with it. The worst thing I can say is its weight. Everyone knows the Spyderco clip and that tab. And that you can't get these things anymore. <laughs> like they're hard. They sell out immediately. And, you know, it's a sprint run like a lot of spider co's are. They they make a make a good batch of them and then boom, done. We we reset our tooling. We made these. Tsh, time for the next. But I really wish they would have the ability, or maybe they just buy a certain set of tools, and when the tooling is worn out, they just don't reinvest. Don't know how they do it, but there's all sorts of stuff that it could be. I just wish they would do it because they would sell every piece they make. And that's the other request. And that's why I'm going to end it, you guys, because this is fantastic. The 15V is incredible. It is well worth it. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with this knife at all. It is indeed a package piercer. A shrink wrap slicer. A cardboard carver. And an envelope eviscerator extraordinaire. It is also a hardwood chopper and many other things. So it does its job well. And with that being said, you guys, I am going to end this video. Go ahead. Take this video. Watch it twice. Comment as much as you like. Be mindful of side effects. Remember to like and subscribe. This has been your dose of Drew. I am said Drew. And you guys have a great rest of your night.